The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Television, its sponsors or partners. Hello and welcome to In Conversation on Eastlink Television. I'm your host, Lucky Campbell. And today we have Leo McPherson from the St. Vex Athletic Department. Welcome to the show, Leo. Pleased to be here. So, uh, you're the um, director of the athletics. Uh, just give us a little history about yourself first, I guess, Leo. Well, uh, basically born and raised in Antigonish and uh, uh, you know, product of uh, the local high school system here and the minor sports system. Uh, attended St. of X where I studied uh, and completed my business administration degree and played basketball for coach Steve Konchalski uh, okay. earlier on in his career and uh, uh, yeah I worked for uh, upon graduation I went to St. John New Brunswick worked for more corporation uh, multinational company 20,000 employees uh, did that for what, 10, 10 plus years uh, relocated to Halifax worked for Alliant Corporation here uh, prior to assuming the athletic director job in May of 2005. All right. Fantastic. So how did you get involved with St. of X Athletics? Well, uh, you know, uh, a, a, as a former student athlete, uh, athletics, are, it's in your blood. And, uh, you know, uh, athletics is in my blood, and, and, and St. of X is uh, such a big part of, of who I am and certainly this community. Uh, you can leave St. of X, but St. of X will never leave you. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I've always stayed engaged. Uh, after, uh, when I went to St. John, New Brunswick, I chaired an Irving Oil Golden Ball Classic basketball tournament. It was a university tournament uh, put on by St. of X alumni. And, uh, of course, we had St. of X there every year. Did it largely for selfish reasons because St. John doesn't have a university that competes in the AUS. So it was an opportunity to connect with the basketball team and the university and get our alumni out. So... Uh, started from there and relocated to Halifax. I chaired the Athletic Endowment Fund dinner, the Father Keo dinner in Halifax for a while, worked on that committee and uh, Nova Scotia rep on the National Athletic Endowment Fund committee. So really it's, uh, I was very fortunate I turned a hobby into a full-time job oh and uh, so it's, uh, I feel blessed uh, in that regard. So being the director of the athletics, uh, what does that role entail? Well, <clears throat> it's a good question. I get that uh, often, and uh, really, it's uh, it, it's being the overall architect and general manager for all of our athletics programs, uh, most public of which are varsity athletic programs, mm -hmm. of which we have eleven. Uh, but I'm also responsible for the fitness and recreation, the campus recreation for the students uh, uh, and intramurals in that regard, and also for people in the community that come on campus to use our facilities. So, all of that's rolled up into into my responsibilities. It's such a pretty big job, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, you know, when you got 4,200 plus students, you got right. 280 varsity athletes, and then you got community members, and it's a very public position. You know, it's uh, I enjoy it, and, and wherever I go, people always give me feedback and stuff, and, and very supportive. And uh, it's uh, and a lot of experts out there too. You know, that love to give you advice on how to run things exactly. and stuff. And I appreciate it because if they didn't care, they wouldn't be talking about us. Exactly. So. So there's a little, um, I guess, a bit about the evolution of the St. Vex Athletic Department. Well, geez, a lot of growth over the years. Lucky, you know, when you think of it, uh, from very humble, modest beginnings, uh, you know, back at the turn of the century, uh, uh, the 19th, uh, 1900s, but on, and it's, you know, it's really blossomed into a nationally prominent athletics program. Uh, you know, it's uh, in many ways seen as a little school out on the East Coast in rural Nova Scotia that can compete with the heavyweights in the country. Exactly. And, uh, you know, uh, we have, uh, you know, a number of national championships to show for it. And uh, really, it's, it's uh, I look at it as a, uh, an athletics program that, that uh, also supports the academic mission of the university. And uh, we're very fortunate to have a package to sell that is a high-quality education, a high-quality uh, athletic experience, and a social experience second to none in the country. Exactly. Yeah. Certainly, uh, St. of X is recognized internationally, I guess. Well, it is. You know, I mean, certainly with the Cody Institute and the work that's done there, absolutely. But, uh, you know, my job takes me to different centers. I fly across the country into the U.S. and 
Uh, it's amazing how many times that X-ring just uh, yeah. provokes a question from somebody, often what year, you know. So exactly. It, do, you it, do you run into many people wearing them yourself? Oh, I do, actually. You know, in, you know airports and, and hotels uh, being two of the, uh, the primary spots. But, yeah, you know, it makes you proud to be a Zavarian and, uh, and when it gets recognized uh, the way it does and, and to have the symbolism of that uh, very simple X on the ring. Uh, it stands for so much, and uh, it's a nice bond between all of our alumni. Right on. So for those who may not know, uh, what sports does St. Nevex have? Well, we have uh, 11 sports. Uh, you know, with the, you know, everybody's familiar more often with the football, basketball, and hockey. So we have football that the men play. Uh, the, uh, the female complement to that would be women's rugby. Okay. We have uh, men's and women's basketball. We have... Uh, men's and women's hockey, men's and women's cross country and indoor track, uh, and we have uh, men's and women's soccer, and we have our women's volleyball program. We used to have a men's program, but it's been many years since we've had that. So, anyway, there's a it's it's a lot for a school our size. Mm. Uh, it's a very vibrant uh, work environment, and uh, you know I get to work with some outstanding people. So, what seems to be the <clears throat> most popular sport amongst the students? Well, you know it's. Uh, <clears throat> You know, that could differ from alumni and everything, but, you know, the, there, there are three sports that are, are the most well-attended sports on campus, and it, it's, you know, it's, 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 you know, basketball, hockey, and football, the most well-attended, and that's a mix of students, community members, alumni, and what have you. But uh, you really ought to get out to see some of the other sports to get a full appreciation for just how special they are. Right. Like rugby in particular. I, you know, in Annie Canis growing up here, we didn't have a rugby team. I knew next to nothing about rugby. But it's one of the sports I've grown to love a great deal because of the athletic ability that's in there, the people that play that sport. Uh, our program's uh, very successful on the national level. And uh, I have such a greater appreciation for that and the sport of cross country. You know, I've always seen cross country as may not be the most uh, spectator friendly sport, but mm -hmm. I'll tell you, when you get up close and personal and you see what they do and how hard they work and train, uh, you, your respect for the sport goes up exponentially. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, where are the majority of your athletes from? Well, you know, it's, uh, we have, if you look at the state of X student body, we're about 60% Nova Scotia, 40% from outside Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. If you look at the varsity athletes as a subset of that, mm -hmm. we're about 60% outside Nova Scotia, 40% inside Nova Scotia. So we have uh, many from across the country. You know, uh, one great thing about athletics, it really adds to the diversity of campus. Exactly. You know, both from, uh, uh, you know, a geographical background, but, you know, where they're from, color of the skin, everything else. It's great, and it really uh, uh, helps to nourish the campus life. So we have them from the States, from England, Czechoslovakia, the former Czechoslovakia, the Czech Republic now, uh, all over. And you know, we've had them from Brazil. It's, it's really uh, wonderful to see that we can all pull together people from various backgrounds for various common causes like their, their team endeavors. So how do you recruit those uh, people from, you know, say, from, from the former Czechoslovakia? Well, with the Czech Republic, uh, I mean, it's Lou Billick, a long-time coach of St. of X, 39 years, and like anything, it comes down to a network. I mean, Lou's, Lou's from the Czech Republic and is back there every year and mm -hmm. has, you know, originally recruited for his team but has since made contacts and has recruited for other teams. But, uh, you know, many of the coaches in the world of sports, very public, they've played on teams, they've coached teams, they, they build an amazing network. And uh, it's that network that uh, went in action. Uh, really is, is a sales engine for bringing in these recruits. I mean, right. uh, oftentimes they'll, they'll identify the talent or the potential good fits. You know, oftentimes these, our students are taught by a St. of X graduate somewhere along the way, or they're coached by a St. of X graduate. So they've heard all the good things about St. of X. And, you know, it's amazing. Some come to our university sight unseen. They, the first time they see it's when they have all their luggage and boom. <laughs> but right? more often nowadays we see recruits coming here. They take their campus visit to St. of X or any other school and uh, they want to make a really educated, informed decision because it's a big part of their life. And, you know, for St. of X, uh, it's not a four or five year decision, it's a 45 year decision because right. once an X man or X woman, woman, always a, an X man or X woman. So uh, it, it's a lifetime decision. Right on. Well, this is really fantastic stuff, Leo, and um, certainly we're going to uh, investigate a lot more of this. And uh, we're going to take a short break right now. Sure. But uh, we'll be back with more in conversation.
The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Television, its sponsors, or partners. And we are back with more in conversation on Eastlink Television. And we have Leo McPherson, who's the director of the athletics at St. X University. So, Leo, um, just give us a few uh, thoughts, I guess, about uh, your coaching staff. And well, you know, it's, uh, it's, I'm truly blessed with an outstanding coaching staff. And, uh, you know, we have, uh, well, Lou Billick had just retired after 39 years of service. Steve Konchalski, our basketball coach, uh, well-known coach, got 34 years in. Wow. And we're right down to, you know, uh, you know, somebody with a couple years experience, two, three years, and Michelle O'Coin. And, uh, you know, it's, it's wonderful to work with such committed, energetic, passionate people that are, that are in it for all the right reasons. And, uh, and you, know, they're, they're, you know, they're such great mentors and uh, role models for, for these young men and women that are student athletes at St. Uh, you can never underestimate the role they play in the development of these, these young people because by and large these students get recruited here at age 18 or so. Men's hockey would be a little different because they play major junior hockey. But uh, they come here so as boys and girls, and then with that growth and the experiences, they leave as men and women, and the coaches play a, a huge part in that growth. And, uh, you know, so the, the comfort in knowing I've got an outstanding coaching staff at Cinevax uh, pleases me a great deal and allows me to jump out of bed every morning and, and uh, run into the office. So, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I would say that it's certainly in a testament to, uh, to the success that, uh, you know, your teams have been having over the years. You know, St. of X is second to none, really, on, on the, uh, the front stage. Well, you know what, I mean, as mentioned earlier, it's a nationally prominent athletics program, and, uh, and, and that doesn't happen by accident. Exactly. That, that, takes, that takes commitment from the president, Dr. Sean Riley, and our past presidents, down to our executive leadership team and right down to where the rubber hits the road with the coaches and the, and the student athletes. So, uh, you know, it's, it's tremendous and, you know, it's, it, I can't underestimate how, how hard these coaches work on our behalf. It's, uh, it's not a nine to five job. In fact, it's anything but a nine to five job. And uh, it's a seven days a week thing for so many weeks of the year. Uh, uh, if they're not committed 100%, it doesn't work. And, uh, you know, there's, they, they deserve a huge credit for the, the athletics program that we've built over the years at Cinevex. What is the approach that you use in, in uh, acquiring a coach? Well, you know, you know the vast majority of times we, we hold a national competition um, and uh, we'll pull together a hiring committee, a bit of a search committee, we'll post the position. Uh, we often meet, we'll shortlist a few candidates, bring them in. Uh, and, you know, through the interview process, we get a great understanding uh, of the candidates' strengths and weaknesses, uh, you know, just how much they truly understand and appreciate and respect the student-athlete experience of St. X. Do they understand where athletics programs fit within an academic institution? Um, and then what their vision is for building a program. So. Uh, you know, they come in, they're very prepared and, and uh, you know, we're pretty thorough with the questions and whatnot. So uh, at the end of the day, nine times out of ten, you make a great decision in terms of a hire. You, you know they're, they're going to be a good fit. Right. And there's nothing like, now it's my fourth year here, nothing like hiring uh, a person that you're supremely comfortable with. Exactly. You know, yeah, I've been lucky to inherit some good people, but when you can hire your own, it's, it's, it feels extra special. Right on. Talk about some of the uh, recent successes uh, for the athletic department. Uh, for example, Braden Ferguson. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's success on the team level and the individual level. First, I'll touch on, on some of the individual level stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as you mentioned, Braden Ferguson, a member of our women's uh, hockey program, was uh, named uh, this past winter as the most outstanding uh, female hockey player in the country. Wow. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, fall prior to that, uh, Giselle Landry of her women's rugby team was, uh, was also named the uh, outstanding female rugby player in the country. And it's, uh, she was able to repeat. So this past, well, last, last month, uh, November, in uh, Lethbridge, I was out uh, as vice president of the CIS. I was actually able to give her her award. She repeated. So back-to-back so -back years, outstanding player of the year in the country. So 
that's great on an individual level but first and foremost these 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 young women are are, are women of great character they show great leadership on their team and uh, their team first mentality which when you think of it uh, doesn't necessarily benefit the individual performance but in reality it does because because they look out for her, their teammates their teammates look out for them you can't do it yourself in a team sport so exactly so that's great on the team side well you know just go back to 2000 2001 we had back-to-back -back national championships with our uh, Cinevex men's basketball team 2004 our Cinevex men's hockey team won a national championship in Fredericton uh, 2006 our women's rugby team won a national championship in London Ontario uh, you know, uh, 2007, uh, women's cross country win bronze, uh, first ever for our program at the national championships in Victoria. And I was, you know, fortunate enough to be out there with them for that too. And then this past October, our men's cross country team won silver medal, uh, in Quebec city. And it just shows that, uh, it, uh, we are creating a high performance culture at St. Uh, within our athletics department. And success is not confined to one or two teams. Success is across the board. So exactly. uh, we want to continue to build on that. Uh, something about um, it's a huge improvement to the department will be the construction of a new football field. Can you talk a bit about that? Well, yeah. I mean, it's, many people see it as a football field. And, and, of course, in my role as the director of athletics, I see it as a real, really a multi-purpose field. Our football team will certainly play on it. Our men's and women's uh, soccer teams will play on it. Women's rugby teams will play on it. Intramurals will be played on it. Minor sports teams in the community will play on it. Right. Uh, you know, it's it's going to have a multifaceted use, which is really exciting. Um, and we're going we're in the design stage now, and uh, you know, it's certainly our hope to have it uh, to start construction on that in spring of 2009. Uh, that is dependent on some more successful fundraising both uh, with private donors and with a couple other levels of government. Of course, the provincial government were great. They came on board last year with a $700,000 uh, contribution to the, uh, to the project. So, you know, from the Premier to, to Minister McIsaac and, and everybody, Gerard McIsaac at the local level, uh, dealing with it, <clears throat> it's been phenomenal. So it's really been a catalyst for others and to get on board with this. So uh, I never want to say it's a sure thing for spring, but we're, we're operating as if, we're going to break down and uh, break ground in uh, in the spring. All right. And what will be the difference between the field that's there now and, and the new field? Do you oh goodness, yeah. <laughs> well, this one will be flat for one oh, thing. Okay. It's uh, you know that field we have uh, is uh, is rather unique in the country. The yeah, field we I would have say it's, that. Uh, you know, it would, it's a four and a half foot elevation change between the peak point on the field wow. and the low point. Uh, yes, yeah, much. not by design. There was a two and a half foot uh, crown built into it for drainage purposes okay. by design. All right. A little bit of settling over time is oh, added to the other two goodness. feet. So yeah, right. I really look forward to having a flat surface out there All and right. uh, yeah, that we'll be very proud of. And you know, the, we're long overdue for a new field and uh, it's going to be such a boom to, uh, to recruitment for all student athletes. And, and just students in general, the, you know, our uh, recreation facilities will be enhanced a great deal. But uh, having grown up in this community, to be a young uh, participant on a minor sports team, to be able to run out on that field and play exactly. would be a huge thrill. Yeah. Right on. Well, Leo, this is such uh, exciting, fantastic times that uh, you're going through right now. Oh, oh absolutely. And uh, we've got to talk a lot more about it, but we've got to take a break right now. Okay. So uh, we'll be back with more In Conversation. The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Television, its sponsors, or partners. And we are back with more In Conversation, and we have Leo McPherson, who is the Director of Athletics at the St. Vex University. So, well, Leo, this has been a fantastic interview. I've learned so much myself about uh, the whole athletic department. Uh, talk a bit about the staff in the athletic department, uh, coaches aside. Well, yeah, it's, uh, these are the people behind the scenes, you know, that you don't often uh, get get the glory or whatnot and, and probably the recognition they deserve. But, uh, you know, we have a lean staff where we, we don't have a lot of people there. So it, it's critically important that we have very committed people. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, you know I can honestly say if if we were to let any one of them go, we'd probably have to hire two to replace them to get that level of commitment and, and work ethic. And and often they have they have young families and whatnot too, so exactly. it, you know that, that that takes their work outside the nine to five you know uh, uh, time frame. So. I couldn't do what what I'm able to do and what our department's able to do without them. You know, we've got, uh, you know, from Krista McKenna to Jared DeFazio, Pat McGilvery, Jeff Voss, and, and his team. And, uh, you know, on the fitness and recreation side, it's, uh, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm just blessed to have good people. And I don't care what organization you're in or with, you're always in the business of finding good people and then retaining them. So, exactly. you know, it's, uh, it, it, they're, they're a great bunch to work with. Right on. And so are they a mixture of volunteer and paid staff, or how does that work? Well, they're the, this, the, the people I'd mentioned are, are full-time paid staff. Uh, of course, I mean, Cinemax Athletics couldn't operate without the volunteers that work our games and whatnot and help us and assist. And, uh, uh, you know, that's one thing about Cinemax, uh, be it athletics or other parts of the university, people are passionate about the school mm. and they're committed. And the one thing with St. of X Athletics, it's one of the higher profile departments on campus. You know, they often say athletics is the front porch of a university. Uh, and I can see that, you know, nine out of ten times uh, St. of X name appears in the paper. It's due to athletics. So that's a good thing. Um, and, you know, we're able to get people that are committed to come on board and help. And it makes our job so much easier. So, uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's a mix of volunteers and full-time paid staff. Right on. So talk about some of the milestones that you've achieved over the years. For example, the Millennium Center. Yeah, you know, the Millennium Center, what an outstanding facility that is, you know, and, and uh, like I often like to refer to it as the Keating Center as opposed to the Millennium Center because uh, uh, Charlie Keating, a man I knew uh, knew well and went to school with four of his, his uh, children at Cinevex, uh, you know, such an amazing ambassador and, and a Zavarian that that uh, when I mention that building, I like to say Keating Center because I think he deserves a ton of credit right. for his contribution to that. So, it, you know, for a women's and men's hockey program, outstanding. When we take recruits in to see that building, and it's such a multi-purpose building, but I'll talk in the sports context mm -hmm. here, uh, and then go into the locker rooms, it's like there's a wow factor with, <laughs> with that. Um, you know, the other sports, when we take them through our facilities, we're missing the wow factor, but if we get that turf and stuff, there'll be more of that. But... Uh, you know, I'm confident that I know better days are ahead in terms of it. it'll be our turn for facility upgrades, but the whole campus has been so energized over the past dozen years. So <clears throat> having that complex uh, really is, has been a, a huge lift to our hockey programs and, and whatnot, and general student recruitment and even attracting business to uh, any Ganesh area. Mm -hmm. That's great. I think the, the major growth of our female sports on campus, I mean, it's not a building I'm pointing to, but, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, female sports has come so far in, in such a relatively short period of time. Their history is so much younger than our, our men's sports history, uh, yet with coaching, with, with the funding, we've seen it grow uh, a great deal. And, that, and that's, that's great to see because, you know, you look at our student populations, probably 60% female or pretty close to it. Right so, on. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, what would you like to see Santa Fe Sports in five to ten years? Well, five to ten years, I'd like to see our athletics program continue to build on our, on our track record of success. Uh, you know, at Santa Fe, we we uh, we prepare to win, we commit to win, and we expect to win. And uh, it's uh, again, you know, we want to be the poster child for the university in Canada that does it uh, with with modest means, but with committed people. Uh, you know and uh, see our facilities upgrade. So generally we're able to, we hope to be able to drive our high performance culture across three or four teams that's currently there to all 11 teams. So anyway, that, that's exciting. That, that, that gets me out of bed every morning and, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's my self-proclaimed dream job and uh, to, to do this, even with all the challenges, it's just so much fun to come to work every day and, and knowing that you can help advance St. of X in, in, in some manner every day. Right on. Yeah. So, any final words you'd like to say to the community? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, you know, when I was offered this job to come back to uh, to Annie Ganesh and Saint Evax, it was a homecoming on two fronts. Because not only did I graduate from Saint Evax and haven't played uh, basketball here, I was able to uh, come back to a hometown that I just love. And you know, I think this community here uh, teaches values and social skills that help 
every person that, that comes up through this system and they're taught by educators in our community that really care for you as, as people. My two daughters, I moved them here as teenagers and they just love the area. And what's the biggest difference between here and, and where we came from, the Halifax Bedford? They just said the people here are just so nice right and on. so caring. And I think that's a great foundation for our youth and they come up and they have a can-do attitude. You know, I think it prepares them well for the next stage. And if it's universities the next stage that come to Cinevex, well, that's great too. Uh, but uh, anyway, rest assured, most of them will be well equipped from an educational and social development. And, and again, I touched on our minor sports in this area. We've got some great minor sports programs and dedicated people behind the scenes and coaching. So uh, in short, it's uh, it, keep on doing what you're doing in the community here because it's outstanding. And it uh, makes me proud to, to work in this community and uh, be a part of it. Well, Leo, you keep on doing what you're doing well, because thank you you're, so much. you're a testament to the, yeah. the niceness and the greatness yeah. that we have here in Anaconda. And we're just so proud to have you uh, at the at the Saint of X and all the work that you're doing. Well, I appreciate that, and uh, continue to follow East Link and all the good work you're doing promoting our community and our Saint of X Athletics program. Thank you so much, and thank you out there for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time on In Conversation. Mm -hmm.